so is it okay to play with unpainted miniatures in Warhammer 40k? Let's have a chat about it. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're doing a bit more of a discussion video, talking about the pros and cons of using unpainted miniatures in games of 40k. I think it's an interesting question, and certainly one that raises strong opinions on all sides. Obviously quite a lot of this will be what I think, but I'd be very happy to hear anything you have to say on the subject down in the comments. In any case, let's jump straight into it. So first up, I would say that generally, there are plenty of situations and reasons where it's absolutely fine to use unpainted miniatures in 40k, though for the vast majority of people, playing against a painted army is preferable if you have the choice. For me, and I'm sure quite a lot of other people, playing against an awesomely painted army can be a real treat and really add to the game though I've still had plenty of really good games of 40k against miniatures without any paint on them whatsoever, and I think that you're going to miss out on good games against nice people if you don't ever play anyone who's got an unpainted miniature in their army. There are really quite a lot of reasons why someone might not have painted every single miniature, at least for most people it is going to take more time to paint than it would to assemble your miniatures, and for a lot of people the painting stage can get a bit delayed, as it is a lot of extra time and effort investment to get them completely finished, when you can still easily play games with them as they are physically assembled. A lot of us these days have very busy lives, and if you're juggling work, children and social commitments, it's kind of understandable that you might not want to spend every single second of your free time slavishly putting paint onto miniatures. Some people might just have less interest in the painting side of the hobby, really into the game perhaps, and at the end of the day it is a hobby, if you genuinely do dislike the painting that much, then I can see why you'd not want to bother, as of course playing Warhammer is supposed to be a hobby for fun, not a job. Some people might take really quite a long time to get miniatures painted. If you are aiming for a really nice end result on the miniature, often it's just not feasible to get it speed painted. It's often going to take some time and dedication to go through all the different phases of painting, and if you just quickly slapped a whole load of paint on it to try and get it battle ready, you might not get quite the same end result. At the same time, you might still be wanting to use your work-in-progress miniatures in-game, rather than waiting several weeks down the line until they're finally done. Finally, unpainted miniatures can be really quite relevant for newer players. Naturally, when you're starting, pretty much everything's going to be unpainted, and if you want to build up quickly towards a force that you can actually play games with, you're going to be giving yourself an enormous amount of grey plastic to get paint on, and you're likely not to be quite as efficient with the painting right at the very start, and it would seem a bit sad not to let newer players play the game until they're painted every single miniature it wouldn't be very good for building up their enthusiasm for Warhammer. I think in general very few people would refuse a game of 40k against a nice opponent, who would likely give them a fun game, even if maybe not every single miniature had paint on yet. Obviously I'm not speaking for everyone here, there's plenty of people who would just rather not play a game rather than play an unpainted army, just because it won't have the same sort of level of immersion. In my experience though, they do tend to be the exception rather than the norm. I think different people would certainly mind more about different levels though, I think there's really quite a lot of difference between an entire unpainted army, or just having an unpainted unit or two that's been a recent addition to your list. Overall, I'd say as a community, it is quite nice to be able to welcome people who don't have a fully painted army, even if most people would agree it's certainly preferable to play against something that's really nice looking. Having said all that, I think there are quite a lot of reasons to try and up your game and get miniatures painted if you can. It does add to the immersion and spectacle of a game of 40k, and in general I feel it's a little bit more polite to turn up with painted things if you can, I do certainly try to myself, though I'll often fall into the category of having a few units partially painted, as it's quite tempting and fun to use new shiny models as soon as I get them, even if they might only be part painted. I don't think I've ever had anyone give me any sort of criticism for this. A few work in progress units within an otherwise painted army are generally very very well tolerated by the community at large. If you are playing in tournaments or certain other events though, they might well require it, a three colour minimum is often talked about, or painting to a Games Workshop battle ready type level, their term for a simple and effective paint scheme, that they talked about quite a lot alongside the release of their contrast paints. I think even if painting isn't necessarily your favourite part of the hobby, I would recommend most people at least try and give it a go, I think most people will find it fun or satisfying to at least some extent, and even if the process itself doesn't really excite you all that much, the end result of getting your own personalised dudes on the table and looking great in their own colours really is one of the things that makes Warhammer special compared with other hobbies. I would argue as well that even if you don't have all that much time, getting the basics done doesn't really take all that long, and a little effort really can go quite a long way towards miniatures having a really nice effect on the table. Undercoating the miniatures in your army's colour is really quick, and then even if you just picked out a few details on the most prominent areas of the miniatures, 
say the tops of tanks or the pauldrons of space marines, or painting the weapons a different colour to the main body, and you've gone a really long way to making them look good at a distance. Even a really basic paint scheme can look quite good on the tabletop when your troops are ranked up, even if they don't really bear that much scrutiny to if you actually pick up and examine any given model. Depending on the army, contrast paints can be another very quick solution, and they're particularly good for anything with a lot of organic detail or cloth. A lot of the time I do quite like to get a few base colours down on my units, then use them in-game, and then gradually add in all the fine detail at a later date, so they're still functional, and they don't stop me from achieving a bit of a nicer end result when I get everything finished. Finally, one other advantage to getting paint on models is Games Workshop's new Paint for Victory Points policy in match play missions. I found this to be quite a weird addition to the game at the start of 9th edition, basically Games Workshop's missions course, if your entire army was painted to a battle-ready standard, and effectively penalising your opponent if yours was painted and theirs was not. I think that this has made the negotiation just a little bit more complicated rather than easy, as it's just another factor to think about. I would say that most of the time a 10-point swing isn't likely to win or lose you a game of 40k, at least in the majority of 9th edition games that I've played, it wouldn't have made a difference if one of us had shown up with an unpainted army. People do seem to be using this, at least in my experience, though I've not yet come across a situation where it would have actually mattered, and to be honest, if I had just suffered a close loss to an army that wasn't painted, I'd certainly feel a bit sketchy about trying to enforce this and claim a victory, if the other player had outplayed me on the tabletop, and the only thing that was going to decide it was whether they had an unpainted model or two or not in their army. All that aside though, if you do look at this another way, you could see this points penalty as a way of Games Workshop legitimising playing with unpainted models in their games. By the fact that the rule exists, it implies that some people will turn up with unpainted miniatures, they will take a 10 point victory point hit as per the match play rules, but it shouldn't stop them from playing games with you. So anyway, there are a few thoughts about playing with unpainted miniatures in Warhammer 40k, I'll be really interested to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. What are your experiences of playing with unpainted models, and what are your rules for yourself and your opponent as to what you're happy to play with? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics. I do like to make some more discussion focused videos in addition to all the normal tactics content. Finally, if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that I do have a Patreon page which you can find down in the video description. Making all these videos does take a fair amount of time, so if you are enjoying regularly, any support is massively appreciated. Channel patrons do get a few advantages, such as seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the Auspex Tactics prize giveaway with the chance to win some big model kits. If any of that sounds interesting to you, or you'd just like to help support the channel, the link is in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.